الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Though we have started our weekly series, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last messenger, but for certain due reasons and piling up on these reasons for months or years, though I have highlighted, but it is prime as a time that I have to remind myself and the rest again. So I thought to choose this topic for the family of At-Taqwa, Ma'na al ghiba talking about gossiping. With due experience, blessings of Allah with the knowledge, extreme or intense um, research and visiting various communities, various masajid, Various countries, so many countries, I would say, and so many associations, I found that one of the major disease, the marab, sickness in us is al ghiba, backbiting. In fact, it has become more delicious to us than any sugar in tea or any candy given to you to eat. In fact, you are ready to have tea party and if there is no sugar, people are willing to overlook that. And they will say, candy is enough, we don't need sugar for the tea. But, if that majlis, if that mahfil, if that sitting, if that gathering goes only with qala Allah wa qala Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if one of them, they try to talk about somebody, the host says, brother, this is a majlis, we do not want fihi ayy ghiba, we do not want any backbiting in it, that person will be extremely offended and he will find that place a tasteless place and he will find excuses to leave it as soon as, as possible. In fact, the truth is, if you want your guest to leave as soon as possible, you just stop them from gossiping and that will be the message for them, the time is over. We find it funny, but it is not. It is not something out of illusion, I am saying, but it is fact which is happening. Illa man rahimahu rabbu. Exception is given only to those who have mercy from Allah. And I just wonder if any amongst us are of those. We have highs and lows. At times, at times you will have that kind of iman where you may find this offensive and you will stop. But good chances are Many a times we fail. So what is this gossip? What is riba? Riba is an Arabic word. It is something which you talk about others 
while they are not there. الغيبة ذكر المرء بما يكرهه بظهر الغيب. It is something which you talk about others in their absence. Naturally things which if you had spoken in front of him, he would not have, he would not or she would not have liked it. And we know that this is something which offends us all. If you know that somebody has spoken about you something which you do not like, you would not take that lightly. In fact, if somebody comes and says you, Fulan has said something about you without any verification, without finding any excuses, without retaining to yourself and seeing whether you really did that or said that, you would take that as an offensive message and you will plan and plot in every way possible to rebut that person or to get back to him or her. There are similar words with similar meanings related to riba, such as al-ifq, wal-buhtan, wal-hams, wal-ghams. These are Arabic words. Though we don't need to go in intensity of the meaning of every one of them, but while we are discussing, it may be important for us to know a little bit of it. al riba normally scholars, they explain it as something which you mention about others which they don't like while they are not present. And if it's something what you say about others which somebody may have told you, and bohtan is something which you say about others which is not in them. And that's why slandering al qadhfu no'un min al bohtan slandering somebody that fulan al qadhf this is a word normally technically been given in Arabic, technically, literally, it can mean other things also. Technically, is associated with if you say Fulan un Zana, somebody has committed Zina. If they have not, then you are to be whipped 80. And if he claims and you are not able to prove it with four Shuhada, then you still deserve 80. Unless he or she forgives. I just wonder how many of our, us are free of these 80 whips. Any one of us, I wonder if we are free from these 80 whips. It's easy. We talk about somebody, oh, he is committed, he is, you know, involved with Fulana. <coughs> really, brother? Yes. Didn't you know? Of course I didn't know. You know, up to what extent? Oh, you know, the final thing, everything has been happening, everything as it happens between husband and wife, and you have never seen it. You don't know. Even if you are 100% sure, you have not seen it. Even if you have seen it. Wallah, wa billah wa tallah. If you see Fulan committing zina with Fulana, you don't dare say it. Because you need four witnesses. You can't buy witnesses. They have to be among those four who have been able to see it with you. And on top of it, they have to be somebody who is a just Muslim, praying five times a day. In normal circumstances, required all of them to be males. And then, when they go in front of the Qadi, they have to be strong enough to say exactly in which place, in what position, what color of clothing, what time of the night or day, in which country, which city, which room, which, which apartment. If some of them, they fear and they track back, you end up with 80. Who dares to do that? Historically, in these 1400 years, it has not been happening. It happens, it, it did not happen. So, Ghiba and Namima والغمز والنهز. If we talk about evidences from the Quran and Sunnah related to this issue, there are too many. I will share just one or two as a reminder for me and you too. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Ya ayuha al-ladina amanu, ijtanibu kathiran min al-wan." إِنَّ بَعْدَ الذَّنِّ إِثْ 
ولا تجسسوا ولا يقتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم إن الله تواب رحيم الحجرات نمبر 12 All you who have believed Avoid much negative assumption One Indeed Some assumption is sin Even little bit is sin And do not despise And do not backbite Each other We are very good in spying Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when dead? You would detest it Imagine yourself, imagine yourself, you and your brother, forget about a brother, you and a stranger who is another human being, the two of you are walking in the desert, desert and one of you die, and you are stranded, and the dead flesh is beside you, and that's the only way of survival, there is a good chance that possibly 60, 70, 80 percent of the human population will not eat that flesh. Will not be able to eat it, even though knowing that he or she would die. Even though in this situation for your survival it is allowed, but you will not be able to. You will say, I would rather die a death of dignity than to eat that flesh. And yet we do it every day. You would detest it. Indeed, you would. A fear and fear Allah. Indeed. The last message. Allah is accepting of repentance and merciful. Yes, indeed, Allah is merciful. In Allah, Tawabur Rahim. In the end, Allah, the of forgiving, the most merciful, reminds us. Okay, guys, no problem. You are human beings. You have this as a nature in you. It is part of the desire which you have, the lust. It is okay. As far as you remember that in Allah Tawabur Rahim, what what does it mean that if Allah is merciful, what does it mean? If Allah is accepting of repentance, what does it mean? Go back and repent to Allah, then you are on the right track, or else no. Allah says, Wailul likulli humaza tillu maza. Woe to every skona and mocker. Allah Mustah. Also Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِنْ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَسْرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْئُولًا And do not miss you that of which you have no knowledge. Indeed, the hearing, the sight, and the heart about all those ones will be questioned. And then, there are so many, as I said, I will transfer myself to the next stage of giving you a few adillah from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه يسير أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أتدرون ما الغيبة؟ وعند هي صلى الله عليه وسلم سير أبو هريرة سير أتدرون ما الغيبة؟ قال والله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره قيل أفرأيت أي رسول الله أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد يغتبته وإن لم يكن فيه فقد بهته one day the Prophet وسلم, he said to his companions, Do you know what backbiting is? They said, The companions, they said, Allah, Allah and his messenger know best. Right? So he continued, والسلام, after asking this question, they were all, you know, watching him, وسلم, wants to know what it is. Right? They knew naturally what malghiba, tadruna malghiba, it's a basic, simple Arabic word. More easier understood than the word backbiting. They were Arabs, they were too good in their language. But they said, Allah wa Rasuluhu alam. So it was not exactly the norm which they had or technically they, literally they understood. They wanted to know the technical side of it, the Sharia aspect of al -Ghibah. They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu alam. Qala alayhi salatu salam. Saying something, the meaning of which is saying something about your brother that he dislikes. Then someone asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what if I, what I say about my brother is true? Meaning that I say, you know, he's shoddy. What about if it is true? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded, 
if what you say is true, then you have bad beaten him about him. And if it is not true, then you have slandered him. In lam yakun fi faqad irtabtahu. Faqad bahattahu. In another hadith, which is a very famous hadith, I would not go for the Arabic part in this, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went by, went by two graves, and they were punished for two sins. One who did not protect himself from while urinating and soiling himself, and the other, bad party. And they were being punished in the grave. So be careful of that. One day, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hasbuk min Safiya kaza wa kaza. You know, Safiya is another wife of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Aisha is the other one. They were talking, and he, she said something to Rasulullah, enough from Safiya, you know, this is something simple, it was not anything wrong. As far as my memory re, re, is there, that she was short. So she pointed in a way, you know. So he said, Allah, I said, you know what he said? He said, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَةً لَوْ مَزَجَتْ بِمَا الْبَحْرِ لَا مَزَجَتْهُ Ya Aisha, you have said something. A kalima, which she didn't even say. She said, has book me Safiya, you know. It was just an action which speaks sometimes louder than words. Enough, Ya, ya Aisha. A word which you have uttered, if it is mixed with the water of the sea, it will it will dissolve in it, meaning that it will change the taste of that sea water. You know how hard is taste, the, the uh, salty water? It has its own taste. How much you need to mix in it to change the water's taste? You bring a glass of water, take a glass of juice, Put in it, taste it. Then another glass, then another glass, then another glass, possibly 20 times, 30 times, till you may not be able to, with your tongue, detect the taste. And it's still possibly there would be. And here, 70% of this earth, which is water, and forget about 70%, say 10%, five, though it is 70%, la masjidatu. It will change the taste in the color. If not the color, taste definitely. La masjidatu. Kalima. Ishara. And we, mashallah, tabarakallah. There are so much which we, which we can cover, but I think this is enough from the Qawli Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us see some of those things which the scholars, al ulama al-salaf al-salih, they have said it. Uthkur ibn Abbas, Tarjuman al-Qur'an, Mufassir al-Qur'an, the great warrior, Sahabi, Mujahid, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was a cousin to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a teenager when he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, died, he says, Uthkur akhaka idha ghaba anka bima tuhibbu an yadkuraka bihi. Wada'a minhu ma tuhibbu an yada'a minnak. You mention about your brother, when he's not around, what you would love him to talk about you and do not say about him what you would love him not to talk of you to others now as much as you will wallahi talk about others in good times others will remember you in good times jarrib try it and some of you may have some of the scholars, they said, once he was passing by a donkey which was dead. So he said to his companions, for one of you, لِيَنْ يَأْكُلَ الرَّجُلِ مِنْ هَذَا حَتَّى يَمْلَا بَتَّنَهُ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنَ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ رَجُلٍ مُسْلِمٍ For one of you, to eat from this dead flesh till he is satisfied, is better for him to eat from the dead flesh of his Muslim brother. Once for there, he said to his companions, maybe one of you, you know, maybe one of you, you say, La ilaha illallah, fa'akhsha alayhi nar. You say, La ilaha illallah, and I fear that you will end up in the fire. Oh, how can this be? 
We know when qala la ilaha illallah bi sidqin dakhla jannah that the one who says la ilaha illallah with surat, with ikhlas, with sincerity, where does he go? To jannah. And now this qulal, he says akhsha alayhi nar afiya him to enter the fire because he said la ilaha illallah. Why did he say it? Naturally his companions also feel. What is he saying? So then he said, and how can that be? Then he said, يَغَتَابُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ رَجُلُ فَيُعْجِبُهُ فَيَقُولُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ You know, people they talk around him and they do ghiba. And something of the ghiba which he likes and then he says, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ You know, when we are talking, I don't know about you guys, but at least I know the herbs, when they talk, if they like something, some would say, MashaAllah, some may say, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Right? So he said, I fear you will say, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَيُعْجِبُهُ فَيَقُولُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And this is not the place to say, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ In fact, he should have said, given him nasih and say, إِتَّقِ اللَّهِ فِيَا Allah, which he didn't do. In his stead, he said, Bravo! Wow! لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And that becomes the reason for him to enter the hellfire, Allah, عَيَازُ بِاللَّهِ In Ibn Sirin, Muhammad Ibn Sirin, the great Nasih Al-Amin, the one who had, has many wise words, he says, Inna aksar al-nasi khataya aktharuhum dhikran li khataya al-nas. That the, mo, the people who commit the most of the sins are the ones who mention the most of the sins of others. They are the ones who commit the most of the sins. There are so many beautiful words I would love to mention, but let us see, choose only a few of these, inshallah, and conclude it here. Abu Asim, he says, Ma iqtabtu ahdan mundu alimtu anna al-ghibata tadurru bi ahliha. I have never done any bad biting from the time, since the time I have known that ghiba harms those who are backbiting. That backbiting harms those who do backbiting. And it really affects us as some of those things I will mention later. One day, a scholar known as Al-Qarqhi, Ma'ruf Al-Qarqhi, somebody in front of him, he, they were doing ghibah. Then he said, reminding him, Uthkar Al-Qutun, Iza wudi'a ala aynik. Remember the cotton. We know cotton, cotton, when it will be put in your eyes, meaning that when you die, some of them, they put the cotton in the eyes, in the nose, ears. Remember that time, meaning remember your death. You are going to die and go away, and then what is going to happen? You are talking and backbiting about others. Be careful. Ibn al-Mubarak, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, rahimahullah, another great uh, tabi'i, uh, and another great um, scholar of Islam, he says, Lo kuntu tabi'i, tabi'i, and and he said, لو كنت مقتابا أحدا لقتبت والدي لأنهما أحق بحسناتي لا إله إلا الله What a beautiful word he said A sentence or a meaning He says, if there was anybody If I was going to do ghiba of anyone Or in other words you may say If there is anybody who deserves my ghiba Then that is my parents <coughs> It is also a shock for me. But I read what is after. If there is anybody who deserves my riba, then that is my parents. Why? Because they deserve my hasanat more. Because if I do give up, my hasanat, my righteous deeds will be taken away from me and given to that person. So who deserves it most? My parents. And who does give up their parents? Nobody wants to. Then why you give it to Fulan and Fulan and Fulan? If you, are, if you really want to give it, give it to your parents. Or just don't part with it. And nobody wants to do that. <coughs> One day Al Hassan al Basri, somebody said to Al Hassan al Basri, Inna kataktabani. You did give about me, Ya Hassan. He said, Ma balaga qadru ka indi hadda uhakimaka fi hasanati. He said, your status is far low. Hassan al-Basri is saying to him, your status is not yet there where I give you the control over my righteous deeds. Because once you do give, anybody you, you do give up of, 
that person, you have given him the remote control of your deeds. He can twist at it, at it as he wants. Rewind it, forward it, cancel it, delete it, give it back to you. I will not give it back to you or keep it in his, uh, in his storage or decides that I'm going to deposit permanently with me. I'm never going to forgive you. Everything is in, here, in his hands. So you have given him the remote control, the key. So he said, your darja is nothing. Why should I give you that remote control or that control over my hasana? Indeed, that is what, it ha what happens. Now, after saying few of these from so much I could have, which I could have said, I would like to share here some of the athar or the impacts of the riba, negative impacts of the giver on that particular one individual and on the society as whole. Riba, bad parting, decreases the rewards of that person who did it and increases the reward of that person who has been spoken about. al ghibatu min arba riba. It has been mentioned as in the hadith as being the worst of the interest. Usually, riba. Well, it has been learned. So, why we want to commit ourselves in it? And the one who commits giver is muflis yawm al qiyamah. He is going to be muflis, a person who is bankrupt because your deeds will be all given to that person and you will find with no hasana. And the riba is the reason for enmity and hatred between two brothers, two families, two community, two societies or whatever. al riba to tajr And giba affects your fasting. We know that the one who fasts and is not protecting his lisan, you know, their rewards decreases. And also, if you do ghibah, that ghibah comes and exposes you inside your own house, as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ma'ashara man amana bi lisanihi wa lam yadkhul al-qalba la imana fi qalbi la taqtabu al-muslimin وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا أَوْرَاتَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ اتَّبَعَ أَوْرَاتَهُمْ يَتَّبِعَ اللَّهُ أَوْرَتَهُ وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعَ اللَّهُ أَوْرَتَهُ يَرْتَحُهُ فِي بَيْتِهِ O oh, Muslims, O oh, those who have accepted Iman with their tongue, and it is yet to come and penetrate their heart. Subhanallah, like more looks like that those who do give up, they are so weak in their Iman as if it is not in their heart. Okay? Do not backbite the Muslims. It does not mean to, you are allowed to backbite others, no. Don't backbite. Do not go and look after their aurat in their private lives, their whatever is happening privately. Don't go and, go and find out and dig out and spy on them and so that you can become a BBC. And those who follow aurat al muslimin those who follow the secrets or whatever is supposed to be concealed, and they follow it, Allah is going to follow them. And whoever is being followed by Allah, Allah will expose them inside their house. Meaning that whatever is of yours will come open. And the punishment for that naturally is the hellfire. After saying so much about this, from the Quran and the Sunnah, there are ways to avoid gossip and backbiting. Some of those I would like to share here. If ever happens, remember that Allah knows it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. So try, and this will remind you and limit you to many things. Well, uh, well, alhamdulillah. Remember, nobody is perfect. We are all lacking in some way. So once you start to look at your own ayah, your own imperfectness, you would be so busy to correct yourself that you will forget about others. Wallahi, yawm al qiyamah, kullu wahid nafsi nafsi. Yawm al qiyamah, everybody is me and me. Wallahi by Allah, wa tallahu wa billah. The one in front of you could be a woman who was the most beautiful, the most superior, the most powerful. She is totally stark, naked. She has no clothes. And she is in front of you. And you, what you are? Huh? Nafsi, my nafs. This is 
is what you are, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And that is the way you should be in this dunya. Nafsi, nafsi, you are too busy correcting yourself. Where is your, the time that you, have to, uh, that you get to correct others? Correcting others is okay, but looking after their mistakes, whatever imperfectness in them is, so you busy yourself to gossip with it, is not a no, no way for it. There is no way for it. Recognize that the shaitan seeks to fuel doubts in people and create mistrust among believers. And that is what we sometimes do and we forget it. If ever you hear about somebody, some misfortune, some shortcomings, some shortcomings which they may have, try to strive for compassion, meaning that try to control yourself and better yourself instead of striving, striving to, to spread what the others may have said. Avoid spying. Seek to make excuses for others. And this is very important. Always I say, whenever something happens, look at it from the other side. Because maybe there was a reason. Maybe you understood it wrongly. Maybe you thought it this way and it is the other way. Wallahi, one day I was giving khutbah, I say, I repeated it more than once, that it is not what you saw is what you saw. Yes, by Allah, you saw that thing actually happening. But is it that really that is what happened? I gave you the example of Mughirat ibn Sha'bah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that great Sahabi, great Mujahid, great warrior in the time of Umar, when four people, they bear witness that he committed zina in Iraq. He was brought all the way from Kufa to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, I did not do it. And they said, Bala, Shufnahu, indeed, of course, we saw him committing zina. And they explained it, which I don't want to hear. But then they were proven.